Qatar isn't the only World Cup which has been surrounded by controversy. Back in 1978, there were several calls to boycott the World Cup happening in Argentina after a military coup and installation of dictatorship in the country. Then, back then in 1934, that World Cup was marred by Benito Mussolini trying to promote his own propaganda and fascism around the World Cup. But with so many restrictions in place, what does it take for a brand to come alive during this mega sporting event and engage with its fans and audience? Well, it takes, as a sponsor, um, obviously there's a lot of a brand, uh, a brand play to it, but for us, it takes a lot of responsibility because we have to set up the acceptance infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now I have to say, Doha, one city, eight stadiums around the city is a lot easier than previous World Cups when you had to kind of fly between cities. So in that perspective, um, we'll never see a World Cup mm. with the level of infrastructure and the level of proximity that we've seen this year. We cannot ignore the fact that FIFA World Cup 2022 has been one of the most scrutinized World Cup in the history of football World Cups. Uh, what uh, Did it create any obstacles at all as a global sponsor, uh, you know, that Vivo was as a brand custodian? What What is your opinion? What is your say on I, this? I think, uh, I think football is a great connector, hmm. right? And it connects people, it connects cultures, and it connects everyone who's associated with it. And if you've been around and, and, and I've uh, seen you go around markets, etc., you might have seen people from different nationalities come together and really uh, you enjoy this in harmony. And you know, if things go right, this might be the most viewed World Cup in all time. It is time for a short break. On the other side, we find out some of the brands that we spotted and how did they engage with their consumers on ground during the FIFA World Cup 2022.